It's time for the true soldiers to step up right now, to be kingdom, to throw caution to the wind, to let it all go and live like all you believe is the Bible, like all you believe is the word of God. This is your gut check. This is your one and only marching order because this is all that matters. This is kingdom. The difference. We got an everlasting zone, we trained to think commission yeah. and quit it. We stood at church determined with no pity. We grit it. we love you through the good, bad, and ugly. Empathy's gonna hold it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whoever you are, wherever you are. Welcome to another wonderful broadcast of Ready Yourselves with Bishop Blackman. I am your host, Bishop Reginald Blackman. Amen. I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode. Hallelujah. Ready to build your life and build yourself in the things of God, in the Word of God, preparing yourself for the days ahead. Amen. The Bible tells us to ready ourselves with the Word of God, to always be ready to give unto every man an answer for the hope that we have inside of us. Praise God. That's the basis of this program. Amen. We are here to give you the Word of God and to help you learn the Word of God, help you learn the Bible, because you cannot ready yourself with a word that you do not understand or know. So we want to help you understand the Bible. In this um, broadcast, we're coming, coming from um, the book, um, Grasping God's Word, teaching you on grasping God's Word, how to grasp God's Word, how to better understand God's Word, get a hold of it, amen, and how to properly interpret the Bible. Amen. The Bible is given to us not as a mystery, but it's given unto us as a revelation. It's a mystery to those who perish, but it's a revelation unto life and to those who have everlasting life. So we want to um, help you understand the Bible, understand the Word of God, and how to properly divide the Word of God and discern it and apply it to your life. So um, we're, we're looking at the book, Grasping God's Word, and we're going to continue on in our reading. Last time we had a great, exciting time. Amen. I hope you enjoyed the introduction part of it. And now we're going to get into actually breaking down some parts of the Bible. Amen. Uh, how we actually understand some parts of the Bible. So you should have your, your Bible with you. You should have um, your, your workbook with you. You should have your actual textbook with you, Grasping God's Word. Amen. And later on, you'll need a concordance and how to use a concordance and all that and get a better understanding of God's Word. Today, amen, we're going to enter into the portion of um, understanding sentences. Now, you may think, well, what's the big deal in understanding a sentence? You know, I can read a sentence, you know, I can just go from the big letter to the dot, you know, and get the whole thing in and understand what that sentence said. But it may be a little bit more complicated than that. When you're crossing that bridge, remember that that water, you're crossing that river. And so there are culture, there, there are different um, timelines, there's covenant, there are some of the different things that come between us and the understanding, between the audience that, that heard it and the audience that is reading it. So, um... Uh, how do we begin to decipher the words? How do we begin to break down the words, understand the words? Because words have meanings. Amen. And so we're going to get into the, the actual sentence um, structure and the construction of the actual sentence so that you can um, understand the sentence that was spoken or written. And then from that sentence, you can derive the actual meaning. What is the point of that sentence? And then how does that sentence add to the further text of the paragraph and to the chapter and further and further into the whole entire Bible. So, amen, we're going to get into uh, understanding sentences. Amen, but first, let's go to God with the word of prayer. Father, we come before you today thanking you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for wisdom and understanding. We understand wisdom is a gift that comes from you. Father, this wisdom we're seeking is not the wisdom that we just... Um, get from birth, but it's wisdom that comes from your spirit. So we ask your spirit to be with us and to lead us and to guide us into all truth that we may properly ready ourselves and grasp your word in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, here we go. Um, I'm going to begin reading in chapter, I mean, in, in part one, um, page 30, um, things to look for in the sentences. Now, as we break down every sentence that's in the paragraph, um, well, first, I want you to understand that that we are we are reading the Bible as a serious book, and we don't want to overlook or take anything lightly. You know, it, it is a message from God to us, so every part of it must be deemed important and significant. Amen. We don't believe the Bible is an accident. 
and, and the things were just frivolously put in there without meaning or without regard, but they were purposely put into the scripture for the purpose of leading us in, into a deeper relationship with Christ, for the exact purpose of revealing Christ. All of the scripture reveals Christ. If you read scripture and that scripture somewhere in its context does not reveal Christ, then you're not properly dividing the word of truth. So um, as we read the word of God, I want you to understand that what you're going to find in every part of the word is a revelation of Christ. Hallelujah. He says, I come into, I come in the volume of the book that is written of me. So as we, as we begin to break down these sentences, um, um, this, is a, this is a love letter from God. And the, and the, the totality of the scripture will lead you in, into Christ, a different, a different, deeper relationship with Christ. All right. So first I want to give you a few things that we're going to look for. In every sentence, in every sentence of the Bible, when you begin to break down the Bible, um, you're going to look for certain things in every sentence. He has here, first of all, you're going to look for the repetition of words. Then next, we're going to look for contrast. Then we're going to look for comparisons. We're going to look for lists. We're going to look for causes and effects. We're going to look for figures of speech. And we're going to look for conjunction. Amen. So, uh, then we'll, we'll look for, I'm sorry, then we'll look for verbs, and then we'll look for pronouns also. So you have nine different things you're going to look for in every sentence. Um, you're, going to, you're going to look for repetition of words. You're going to look for contrast. You're going to look for comparisons. You're going to look for a list. You're going to look for causes and effect. You're going to look for um, figures of speech. You're going to look for conjunctions. And you're going to look for verbs. Then you're going to look for pronouns. All right? So, um, we're jumping right into things. Um, repetitions of word. First, you're going to look for words that are repeated or that, that are repetitious in, 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 in the text. So, you look at a text and then you begin to note and you begin to... Now, this is not a complete list of things that you look to observe, but this is a great place to begin for things to, look to observe. You will begin to notice other things as you further observe. Um, scripture, and then you will learn and develop your own technique that includes this list, but not limited to this list of how to um, uh, draw from what was what was written, and how to draw from the plain text. All right. So you're going to look for words that that were um, that are repetitious in the sentence, and and then you're going to just put a mark by the words, circle them, put a square around them, draw a line from one to the other, and then you're going to note those words that are repetition. In the, in the sentence that is written. And then you're going to survey the sentences around it, around that one sentence, and see and look for repetitions of word in other sentences also. Uh, so you go to, go to a couple of sentences before, a couple of sentences after, and look for the repetition of words, all right? And then, then you find the words that, that repeat itself throughout these sentences. So uh, let's begin. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but we're going to look at 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Amen. Turn to your Bible to 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. And after you get there, we're going to read in verse 15. Do not love the world um, or the things in the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world, the world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Amen. Oh, and then I'm going to read that, that same um, scripture from the King James. <clears throat> 